Okay, let's have a look at to install on Linux Mint. Obviously, there's my Linux machine down there, and the pen drive we formatted earlier on. I've already booted the computer up into its BIOS, and as you can see, I'm just about to boot it off the memory stick. So we'll do that. We'll choose what we want for Ubuntu. So, sorry, we'll choose what we want for Mint, which is a top option. We'll start Mint. And Right, Mint is now loading, as you can see. So, we'll go through the process of installing Linux Mint onto the desktop. I apologise about the state of my desk, but obviously, as you can imagine, whatever. Come on, right, so Linux Mint is now up, so we go to the install Linux Mint option there, double click on that you get the weight cursor then you get the install wizard so we'll go through this so obviously I select English because that's where, where my primary language click continue Obviously it checks to make sure I've got an internet connection, I've got enough hard drive space, which is true. We click continue. Obviously when I install Linux I always go do something else. So just in case it finds any partitions from Ubuntu, we will get rid of them. So I go choose something else, hit that. Obviously, it's picked up the old swap space, so we'll nuke that. So we've got 2 gig free. So hit that, set that as primary, set that as that, and set the mount point as root. So we'll crank this down to just under. Do, 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 do. We'll crank this down by about a couple of hundred. That'll do for the root drive. Roughly one point something terabytes. Then the remaining space we will set that to be the do 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 swap area. Obviously the machine's got eight gig of RAM in already, so I'm not particularly bothered about it having a really big swap area, but what the hell. So obviously we've got that. Click install. And it asks my region. Obviously I'm just going to say leave it on London. So I'm in the UK. Click next. Click continue. Obviously my keyboard language is English UK. And obviously English UK. Click continue. Obviously I will set my user details here. So So obviously, as you can see, I've set up my user details. So then I hit continue. Obviously, I'm just going to leave with only having two PCs, one Windows, one Linux. I'm not particularly bothered about the PC name so much. I'm just going to leave it set at that. Click continue. Obviously, it does the copying. So once that's done. We should see, after this is completed, we should be able to boot the computer up and it should go straight into Mint. So, let's just sit and watch. Obviously, as I said, slightly shaky camera for me, but... See, it's just configuring everything else now.
still on the packets it needs. Obviously having to download a bit, but hey ho, I'm on broadband so what's that matter? As I said before, some people might say, why use Linux when there's perfectly good proprietary systems like Windows out there? My attitude is, Windows is good, as I say I'm a Windows developer, but I don't like Windows 8.1 or 8.0. So, I'm opting to go down the Linux route. So, obviously it's just doing a hardware detect now, and we'll see what happens. Sorry if the camera's a bit shaky, but I'm just recording this off my phone, so I'm having to... Uh, Obviously, hold my phone very carefully, so. So, once we've done this, we should find that we have a nice working Linux install in a minute. See, it's just installing Grub and updating it. As I said before, this machine did have Ubuntu on it, but not particularly brilliant fan of Ubuntu. So, as you can see, it now says, "Do you want to continue testing or restart?" So we'll go for a restart. So, all being well, Mint should shut down, the PC should reboot, and we should have a nice desktop. So, we'll just do that. See, so the computer's just going through its diagnostic cycle. And, you see we've got the bootloader there. So uh, give it a minute or so and we should have the desktop on. Come on, okay, obviously. We have the login there, so I click login. So I enter my username, which I set up. See, then enter my password. Oops. As long as I get that right, we should find that we end up on the desktop. Obviously, yes, as you can see, we have now got a fully working Linux Mint 17 desktop. So that ends this tutorial on a basic quick install of Linux. Obviously, after you've done your install, obviously it will tell you if there's updates available, so obviously apply those, like you would for any operating system. And thank you for watching, and leave your comments below.